Hello, my dear students. Now we are discussing on the topic of the intermediaries versus non-intermediaries. Now we have ended the topic on the banking intermediaries. That is, we have started with the Reserve Bank of India. So we will just get the little bit revision about the RBI. Uh, so the RBI has been started on the date of that is existence come into the on the 1st April 1935 as per the Reserve Bank of India Act 1935. And the it is gets the original that is originally privately owned since the nationalizations on the date of the 1949. So that's why the RBI is fully owned by the government of India. So this is all overview about the RBI. The next banking system or the functions of RBI, the most important functions of the RBI that is a monetary authority. Next, they are having the regulations and the supervisors of the financial system. Then manager of foreign exchange. Next is that issuer of currency. The RBI is the most important functions that is the issue of currency in the country. That is the most important functions of the RBI. The next one is a developmental role. Every banking system which is development only by the RBI. Then there is a regulators and a supervisor payment settlement system. What they are doing? They are regulatorized and the supervisor all the payment settlement systems in the banking system and it is also known as the bankers to the government and the next one which is the bankers to the banks which is known as the every banker that is any kind of private bank public bank foreign banks the rbi is a bankers to the bank and rbi also play a role to the government so that's why which is also known as the bankers to the government so right now there are the different kind of functions which are playing by the RBI that is monetary authority. Next one you are having the regulatory and supervisor of the financial system. Next one managers of the foreign exchange. All the foreign exchange or any kind of transactions are happening which is all management by the RBI. Next one having that is the issue of currency. Then developmental role, regulatory and the supervisor of payment and settlement system and next one that is a bankers to the government and bankers to the bank so these are all the functions about the rbi so this was the first rbi that is the financial intermediaries under the banking intermediaries next bank you are having the commercial bank commercial banks you can see there are the different kinds of logos are there that is axis bank sbi bank indusel bank idbi hdfci bank of india these are all known as the commercial banks so we will just get the introductions about the commercial banks commercial banks are those banks which performs all the kinds of banking functions such as accepting deposit that is advancing loan credit creations and agency functions like RBI not accepting de deposits or not advancing any kind of loans instead of these other banks which are doing the most important functions the commercial banks are accepting deposits and the advancing loan as you know RBI having no any kind of individual customer accounts RBI did not open does not open any kind of single customers account because RBI is only doing what are the functions they are having RBI's functions that is issue of currency then supervisory regulators bankers to the bank bankers to the government and now the commercial bank are playing the role which is known as the accepting of deposit advancing of loan credit creations and agency functions now these are next that is the classification of commercial banks how the uh, commercial banks has been classified that is the first one classification which is known as the scheduled commercial bank and the second one it is known as the unscheduled commercial or you can say non-scheduled commercial banks scheduled banks then is divided into the four parts that is the public sector banks private sector banks foreign banks regional ruler banks so these are the main classifications about the all scheduled banks and then the further classification has been done by the public sector banks are classified into two parts that is the nationalization of banks and state bank and its associations and then the private sector banks are known as the old private banks there are some new private bank but the most important classification which is com scheduled commercial banks non-scheduled commercial banks and then scheduled commercial banks having the fourth 
parts that is the public sectors private sectors foreign exchange and the regional rural bank now one by one we will having the before we move towards the next bank there are certain functions of commercial banks functions of commercial banks as you know commercial banks are doing the normal activity that is accepting of deposit so the commercial bank are giving the examples of saving accounts current accounts fixed deposits accounts so they are all the accepting the deposit in the different kind of way they can accepting the saving current or fixed now the next advancing of loans the examples of loan they are given like housing loan car loan overdraft etc and this kind of agency functions agency we are learning the intermediaries so the commercial banks are also playing the agency role that is a purchase of and sale of foreign exchange collection of tax purchase sale of shares so these are all kind of services or all kind of functions which are played by the commercial banks so accepting of deposit advancing loans agency functions these are all functions are played by the commercial banks now next one the next one bank having that is known as the corporate bank corporate bank which is known as the with the help of the corporations the bank has been established so the corporative banks in india are governed as per the banking regulation act 1949 and banking laws that is corporate societies act 1955 these banks have been opened to motto of no profit and no loss condition now the cooperative banks are those banks which is governed as per the banking regulation act 1949 see this is banking regulation act 1949 this is the act where all the banking systems are followed all the rules and regulations to do all certain kinds of normal activities in the banking system so cooperative banks are also governed as per the banking regulation act and as per the banking laws which is known as a cooperative societies act 1955 and the most important the motto of the cooperative bank there is a no profit and no loss okay so this is all about the corporate bank last two foreign that is last two banks are remaining which is known as the foreign banks and last one that is a regional rural banks so we will first learn what is a foreign banks what is the meaning of foreign banks so foreign banks are those banking systems are opened their branches in different nations what are they they are opening their branches in the different nations but their home that there is a headquarter or the head office in their parent country what does that mean means the any kind of banks having the headquarter in us okay they are head office in the us but some banking bank their ba branch is open in india which is known as a foreign bank banks means the foreign banks are those banking companies which are open their branches in different nations than their headquarter so they are having their registered in one country and these banks are open their branches in other countries also which is known as the foreign banks and now the regional rural banks regional rural banks are banks which is helps to open for the agriculture purpose open those who are sick units opens to to those are small industries to strengthen their activities to build up their confidence to build up their fund in their uh, sectors so that's why regional rural banks are those bank in the companies in the organization which is open on the recommendations of the narsimha committee to cater the rural credit needs for the farming and other rural communities so the rrbs that is regional rural banks that is a nabard bank has been established under the regional rural banks because of what because of what the purpose behind opening of the regional rural banks is to giving the credit to whom credit to the farming and other rural agriculture or the communities any kind of agricultures communities the governments want to strengthening the agricultures communities agricultures sectors so for that purpose they have established the regional rural banks purpose there are the main aims of the regional rural banks which is to provide the credit and other formalities like the marginal farmers agricultures and smaller artists who form the evident part for the development of the rural economy so this is all about the regional rural bank so in this today's lectures we have learned all the intermediaries about in the 
about the financial intermediaries in the banking intermediaries we have learned okay so different kinds of rbi then foreign banks then there are corporative banks commercial banks regional rural banks these are all the banking intermediaries which are covered under the today's lectures so i hope you have cleared all the concepts about the intermediaries meaning the overview and different kinds of banking intermediaries in next lecture we will try to cover the non banking financial intermediaries which is known as the nbfcs we will try to cover in the next lectures so thank you so much dear students we are now winding up with this lectures thank you so much